श्री पी ए संगमा चेयरमैन सर इलेवन थर्टीन एंड ट्वेंटी एट मे नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट विल गो डाउन इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द सब कॉन्टिनेंट एज सैड डेज बाई थॉटलेस एंड कम्पिटिटिव न्यूक्लियर टेस्टिंग्स India and Pakistan in their golden jubilee year had landed themselves in a tragic arms race the reasons and timings of the pokhran tests have been questioned by the previous speakers from the site and so far no convincing answer has come for the last 50 years india has followed a well established nuclear policy which was based on the national consensus and the policy was to keep the nuclear option open therefore the choice before us was restrain or exercising that option till 11th of this month since independence all the successive governments all the successive prime ministers has exercised restraint and if it is a choice we've been restrained and exercising the option to exercise restraint is much more difficult thing according to me credit goes to those governments credit goes to those prime ministers who have opted for much more difficult choice the choice of restraint to indulge in adventurism is a very easy job i don't know what is great about this i don't know where is the credit for that and why that restraint was exercised by the previous governments after all we had the capability as far ba back as 1964 homi baba declared that india could make a nuclear bomb in just 18 months in any case sir i am happy that in spite of all the euphoria among the section of the ruling party prime minister mr bachpai was gracious enough to admit that what they have achieved in inverted commas was not the result of the 50 days of <coughs> bjp led government it was in fact the achievement as a result of policy followed by the successive governments in his statement before this house the prime minister said and i quote in para 6 in 1974 <coughs> we demonstrated our nuclear capability successive governments thereafter have taken all necessary steps in keeping with that resolve and national will to safeguard india's nuclear option i must compliment that in spite of the fact that some people have claimed this as a hindu bomb in spite of the fact that some people have celebrated is 
this as a Gaurav Divas, in spite of the fact that some people, very, 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 I don't like to utter that word, but with great uh, restraint, I think I have to, describing all the previous prime ministers as he. <coughs> Mr. Bajpai was good enough to admit that this was not the result of the efforts of the 50 days government, but of the 50 years of hard work. In this respect, I would like to join the whole house in offering my salutations to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, to Lal Bahadur Sastri, Sri Rajiv Gandhi, Srimati Indira Gandhi, and our scientists, computer specialists, engineers, and their cohorts in the defense services for their dedication and splendid achievements. I was talking about restraint, sir. Why the successive governments, successive prime ministers had to resort to restraint? Is it because those governments were not at all concerned about the national security? Is it because those governments were never concerned about the integrity of India? Is it because those governments never care to build up our defense forces? No. As far as my party is concerned, we are second to none in defending the territorial integrity of this country, the sovereignties of this country. It's not merely the defense of the country. It was Congress party which was responsible to free this nation from the foreign rule. We were very much concerned. But then, our governments believed that the security and integrity of the nation does not lie in possessing a bomb alone. The integrity and the sovereignty of the country can be protected in ultimately only when we become economically self-sufficient. The integrity and the security of the country can be well protected only when we are able to eradicate poverty. We are able to eradicate unemployment. We are able to give drinking water. That was the priority of the government. Why we have been talking about secularism so much, as far as we are concerned, the, the side of the house? Because we know that the principle of secularism is much more stronger than any atom bomb in safeguarding the territorial integrity of this country. I don't want to go into long analysis on that. I think Mr. Gujral our former prime minister very nicely described reasons why the previous governments, including himself, did not opt for exercising that option. He said in an interview, and I quote, ammunitions alone do not make a country strong. Otherwise, North Korea would have been a power today and the Soviet Union would not have collapsed. In my balance sheet, economic development was more important. I think that sums up the reason why the previous government did not choose 
to exercise the nuclear option and exercised restraint. When we see on the papers, when we hear different ministers talking in different ways, the Prime Minister, we are yet to understand what was the justification for going for that nuclear test? On what basis? Was there any policy framework? Was there any doctrine in it? Nothing. Sir, so many tests have taken place earlier. And in, at, in, at every time, every government, whenever they had gone for a nuclear test, they have gone on certain principles, on certain doctrines. For example, when in 1974, Mrs. Indira Gandhi decided to go for the first test, her doctrine was very simple. The doctrine was that the test was meant for peaceful purposes. That is the difference. It was meant for peaceful purposes. That's the doctrine of the Congress party under Mrs. Indira Gandhi in 1974. When French, France went for the first nuclear test, they had a doctrine, and that doctrine was proportionate deterrence. That was the doctrine, proportionate deterrence. And when China went for the first test, their doctrine was overall security environment in the world and a principle of no first use. That was the doctrine. But when we went for the Fokran test on the 11th and the 13th of this month, the government is not able to tell us what was their doctrine, what was their basis. From the utterances of the different ministers, particularly from the letter the Prime Minister addressed to President Clinton and the other heads of governments and heads of states, of course, we came to know that their doctrine was security environment from neighboring countries, particularly two countries. The threat from China, threat from Pakistan, that was the doctrine. Is it a doctrine? I am happy that the government has realized today that that doctrine was not a good doctrine of naming a country because the defense minister before lunch, he spoke about the Pakistan test and objected that the Pakistan test was India specific. He has condemned that doctrine. He has disowned that doctrine. Whereas their own test was Pakistan specific where their own test was China-specific. And today, the defense minister of this country comes and tells that what Pakistan has done is wrong because their doctrine was wrong. What is the doctrine? The doctrine was India-specific. Do you think, do we think that the world is not listening to us? The world is not watching us? The world is not observing us? Is it the way a great country like India <coughs> should behave? Is it the way that the government should be run? On the day of confidence motion, from this very seat, I have specifically expressed my doubt, my concern. I said that I am not worried about the stability of Mr. Bajpayee's government, government. I am more worried about how this government will govern this country. 
that governance is the main issue. And today we see how this government is ruling this nation. However, I don't want to go into all. So many points have been made earlier. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. How would you read the statement made by Mr. Shiv Shankar that was in response to the situation like the one that was created by when Mr. President Nixon sent the air warship? His, you read his statement and you read your statement. And then you kindly can reconcile what is the stand of the Congress Party. This is the basic confusion in my view which you would like to clarify. What you are also talking, the other point that I like to clarify is that after this CTBD, after this uh, extension of the NPT, indefinite extension of the NPT, has not the world situation changed in which a nuclear club was sought to be created, a power so cartel was sought to be created, from which India would have been permanently excluded. And they would not have even right to that so-called option. The option would have also lapsed after some time when the TT was confirmed. Would you kindly clarify that? If you remember, in 1974, the government of India under Mrs. Gandhi not only had a doctrine that I am speaking, but she had done enough of diplomatic work before it was tested. Mrs. Gandhi took not only the country into confidence, <laughs> the concerned people, Mrs. Gandhi took the confidence of so many other friendly countries. That is the difference. And 1974 doctrine was peaceful purposes. And today, you are going for weaponization. <coughs> I am coming to the question of weaponization vis-a-vis -vis CTBT and NTP. <coughs> you have gone completely against the principle for which India stood for so many years. You have broken on those principles. Of monopolies by power. You have broken those principles. India oh, also stood for non the of power. Where we refuse to sign CDPT. Reasons why we refuse to sign CDPT. Every reason has been broken by you. I am coming. Just listen for your own information. I am coming. I am coming on your weaponization program. Now that this has been done, and it cannot be undone. Sangwaji, one minute. At the leaders' meeting held today, it has been decided that the private members' business fixed for today may be postponed and taken up on 2nd June 1998. Accordingly, the private members' business will now be transacted on 2nd June 1998. Please continue. Sir. No, no. No, even if the business advisory committee agrees, the house has to agree. It is decided in the leaders' meeting. The house may not be taken off. The house will agree. There is, there is, there is no objection. Please take the sense of the house so that the house will agree. Even now it has been decided in the leaders' meeting. It should be played before the house and it should play the opening of the house of the house. It is necessary. It is necessary. ये सदन की राय है कि ये जो प्राइवेट मेंबर विल है ठीक संगमा जी प्लीज कंटिन्यू सर इंडिया नाउ डी कंट्री हैविंग रिसोर्टेड टू डेट पॉलिसी ऑफ एक्सरसाइजिंग इट्स ऑप्शन I would only like to know how this government is going to handle the consequences, the effects. How are you going to deal with them now? Have you applied your mind? I am uh, asking whether you are applying, you are applying your mind. It's a very uncharitable question to ask. Because of the yesterday's experience, because what happened yesterday is, on one hand, you said you knew everything what was happening in Pakistan. 
Everything what was going on in Pakistan, you knew it. Except that they had already tested their <laughs> nuclear bomb. That you did not know. And even the prime minister of this country came to know after two hours. And I think the friends from this side came to know first. Yes. That is the reason why I am, I, I am asking this particular question, whether the government has started exercising how you are going to deal with those situations. What are the consequences? Number one consequence we know, the retaliation that came from Pakistan. How they have reacted is the first consequence. I was talking to some children yesterday. It struck me very much. They said, sir, uh, people are talking about national pride. That India has become a nuclear power. Where is the pride in it? I said, why? No, if India has become as powerful as United States of America, yes, we would feel very proud. But we have become as powerful as Pakistan. <laughs> Till yesterday, we were superior country. The whole world knew that India has superiority. We had the leading role in the international community. You know? But today, we have become the same. We have also have a nuclear device. They also have a nuclear device. Where is the difference between Pakistan and India? A small country like Pakistan, and the biggest democracy of the world, India, has been now equated with that. Where is the national pride in it? You see, what is the, where is the national pride in it? See? This is not... Please, please don't interrupt. Bharat, please sit. You be quiet. You be quiet. Yesterday you are doing this. For your information, it is the weak people, it is the weak people who show they are strong. Strong people never show they are strong. Our power need not be, our must, need not be demonstrated. Yes, please. Sir, the, dif the difference between the two countries is that today there is a state of national emergency in Pakistan and we, in the best traditions of democracy, are sitting here and discussing this. This is the Mr. Sinha, I never say that it is my opinion. I am only talking to you what children told me. That is children's perception only I am telling you. I am not saying that. Please don't misunderstand. Yeah. Yours is a great government. I admit that. So the consequences, please. This is a serious debate. Please allow. I am expressing my please sit down. Please sit down. My only simple question we would like to know your opinion. That is our problem. Every child is a child. Every child is a child. If you want to tell your children, if you want to tell your children, if you want to tell your children, I want to say something, sir. Sinha, Sinha has said a lot. So, I would like to say that all of the children of the whole children of the whole children of the whole this is the same thing. Please sit down. Madam, please sit down. This government is not The consequences are. The consequences are. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the consequences are, number one, I had said, the reaction from Pakistan, 
how it will lead to an arm race, a nuclear arm race, how it is going to disturb the peace in the region, how it is going to disturb the stability in the region, number one. Number two, how it, is, how it is going to affect the regional cooperation, which is SARC, what is going to be the role of India in SARC. Number three, how India is going to play its diplomacy when today we stand completely isolated by the international community. How we are going to deal with that? Important countries like United States of America have been charged India with playing a role of duplicity. I'm coming to that. It's a very important point that I would like to make. How America has charged India of playing a role of dupli duplicity. Do you why don't you it, is, you it is based on your behavior. I'll do just Please, listen. don't interrupt. And how? Please. Please, please sit down. Please sit down. धैर्य रखिए धैर्य अगर धैर्य नहीं है तो रूलिंग पार्टी में थोड़ा धैर्य सीख जाइए I am just listing out one by one. What are the consequences? इतने इतनी गंभीर बहस चल रही है. इसको आप गंभीर मत बनाइए. आप सत्ता पक्ष में आपको सुनने के लिए आपको सुनना चाहिए उसका जवाब देना चाहिए. आपके सिनास आप सीनियर नंबर हैं. उन्होंने उन्होंने जो कहा उसका जवाब दिया इधर सिनास आप. अब आप धैर्य उनको छोड़ देंगे. तो सदन कैसे चलेगा सत्ता पक्षी अगर धैर्य छोड़ देगा तो कैसे चलेगा सदन सभापति जी आपको ज्यादा शांत रहना चाहिए प्लीज सिट डाउन हमको शांत प्लीज सिट डाउन मगर सवाल यह है कि जो बात जा रही है बाहर सदन के प्लीज सिट डाउन आप कह रहे हैं कुछ नहीं लिखा जाएगा प्लीज सिट डाउन हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू अफेक्ट आवर बायोलैटरल रिलेशन आवर बायोलैटरल रिलेशन विद अवर नेबर्स पर्टिकुलरली चाइना आई वुड लाइक टू नो how we are going to handle that how what is your final stand on the ctpt you have already raised that question i will come to that and more importantly mr sinha our finance minister is here how are you going to handle its effect on the economy of this country we are waiting for your budget i'll discuss much more at that time when we are discussing the budget. But certainly, I would expect Mr. Sina to tell the country how you are going to meet this challenge of sanctions. Coming to the arm race, the Prime Minister, in his statement, <coughs> in FARA 14 of the statement laid on the table of the House, stated, I quote, India shall not engage in an arm race. India shall not subscribe or reinvent the doctrine of the Cold War. I do not know how this statement was made by the Prime Minister of this country. Whether this statement stands valid after Pakistan has gone for five tests. I would like to know from the government whether this statement remains valid. And if it remains valid, if it remains valid, I do not know whether you have control over what is coming. What is coming? What is the scenario? I would like to share this briefly with the House. We already know after our test what Pakistan has done, I'm not going. What did Mr. Bill Clinton say? 
President Bill Clinton told Nawaz Sharif to help us work together. <clears throat> Why? To guarantee your security. This is what Bill Clinton has said, that America will guarantee your security. This is the reaction of President Bill Clinton. <coughs> the US, yes? I don't understand why this such a, such a serious issue we are discussing. <laughs> Such a serious debate. Why is he giving a running commentary on it? Please. We also give a running commentary. Running commentary doesn't need. If he yields, then you can ask him. I think, Mr. Sina, if he yields, then you will. That's the reaction of President Bill Clinton. What did the U.S. Secretary of State say? What is this? How how do you allow? No, no, I am not allowed. No, no. How can we have a running commentary like that? No, he is not in the list at all. Two minutes for the time. Why? No, no, no. Who is the one who is in the list? Two minutes for the time. No, no, they are saying that they are senior members. They have been speaking. Please sit down. You will learn from them. 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 U.S. Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, has said, and I quote, U.S. would respond to Pakistan's security concern, unquote. We have reports that already talks and negotiations, negotiations are on between the authorities of the United States of America and Pakistan for transfer of technology. There is a strong move, and it is almost certain that the Presser Amendment Act is going to be scrapped in order to supply F-16 jets to Pakistan, which was blocked in 1990. For your information, I know the government has all information, but I'm sharing it with the whole house. There has been a visit from Pakistan to China. We don't know what they talk. But we know what now. Uh, 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 what is that? Uh, Prime Minister of Pakistan has, in his broadcast to the nation, the indication that gave he gave, the praise that he had about the long-standing friendship with China and Pakistan. Tested friendship. Yes, time-tested friendship. I think these are things which we should, the country should listen to that. There are reports widely publicized, Pakistan seeking the solidarity of the Islamic world in the matter of containing nuclear India. The self-styled Prime Minister of the POK, Mr. Sultan Muhammad Choudhury, has already been received in the Foreign Office and Commonwealth Office of the British government by a minister. These are signals. The government should take note of it. This is what is happening in Pakistan. And what is happening in our side, I think we all know, I don't know whether I should repeat, the proactive action of the Home Minister, L.K. Adbani. We have heard him for many times. Even yesterday, I don't want the way he warned Pakistan. And uh, of course, my very trusted friend is not here, Mr. Kurana, who said that India is ready to fight for the war with Pakistan. Let them tell us the time and the place, and we will show what India is and what this government is. Hmm. The signals which should come to us, I have told you, the signal which is going to Pakistan only I'm saying now. And it is very important as far as arm race is concerned. Farooq Abdullah, <coughs> the chief minister of Jammu and Kashmir, he says that time for talks and negotiations are over. We should take a tough decision now. 
This is a signal which is going from India to Pakistan. Ashok Shingal on 23.598. What is the alternative if Pakistan continues to abet terrorism in India? It will not be wrong to attack and silence Pakistan." Unquote. Pramod Mahajan, nuclear test tests are not for academic purposes. As, uh, okay. Please, no. BHP. let him conclude. I will not take the BHP, BHP Supremo. You can quote. Don't worry about the rules. I was speaker here earlier. Don't worry. I know the rules. Me pile speaker tha. Then I come to China. I come to China. This is very serious. I come to China. We all we all know. We all know that China has claimed that India has occupied 90,000 square kilometers of their territory. They have also said that Meghmohan line is illegal. And on the 14th of this month, China has accused that Indian tests are a brazen contempt for world efforts at test ban, that the tests are aimed at hegemony in South Asia, that India has slandered China branding it as a nuclear threat. This is the signal from China. What is the signal from Russia? The signal from Russia is that Russia describes India as its strategic partner. Strategic partner. And declares that she is willing to recognize India as a nuclear weapon state. Provided she joins the international non-proliferation regime that includes CTPT and TPT, etc., etc. These are the signals from one place to another going on. And Prime Minister says, India shall not engage in an armed race. India shall not subscribe or reinvent the doctrine of Cold War. I do not know how he is going to stop it. I personally don't think you have to change your attitude. It's very much required. The kind of aggressive posture that the government is making towards Pakistan and the kind of, you know, uh, approach that you're taking towards China. I don't want to refer to what defense minister has said, etc., etc. I think you better be careful what you talk. I do not know why the ministers of this government are so fond of talking. Please, for God's sake, stop talking. And you know, when you talk, you talk after you think something sensibly. It's not easy to run a great country like India. What we cannot afford to, you know, indulge in, uh, uh, you know, cross talks lavishly, which is being done lavishly. Not good for the country. Yesterday, the Prime Minister of Pakistan had offered that Pakistan is willing to for talks. Pakistan is willing to offer no war pact. Of course, the Indian government has Suomuto said and offered to Pakistan that India is willing to offer no first use agreement with Pakistan. Good science. Please pursue it. Please pursue it. I was in Pakistan November last. There was a conference of SARC parliamentarians, the speakers and the parliamentarians of SARC region. And the theme of the conference was people to people contact. 
When I met some of the intellectuals of Pakistan in Islamabad, they were very happy. The kind of research. Mrs. Jaswan Singh was with me. Mrs. Jaswan Singh was not Sinha, but Singh was with me. And I'm happy to tell you here, friends, that one of the gentlemen in Pakistan asked me, Mrs. Sangma, do you know who is the most popular politician of India in Pakistan? <coughs> I said, how do I know? They said, for your information, the most popular politician of India in Pakistan is Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Please clap. Yes. <laughs> and I asked him, why? I asked him, how? This is childish. And I ask why? How is it that Mr. Baspai is so popular here? They say that today you are having a conference on people to people contact. But this process of people to people contact between India and Pakistan was started by Mr. Bajpai who, who, when he was the Foreign Minister of India. He went to Pakistan and he liberalized the visa procedure so much, so good, so well, you know, streamlined, easy visa, so that so many people from Pakistan could come to India and so many people from India could go to Pakistan. That was the initiative taken by Mr. Atulberi Bajpai. And he was the most popular politician in Pakistan. I do not know after the 11th of May what is his popularity in Pakistan. That, of course, I cannot say. Strongly popular now. I see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I think you came back from Islamabad last night, it seems. <laughs> I can tell you. I met large number of people of Pakistan. They told me. I met the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. I met the then President of Pakistan. I met the Speaker and members of Parliament in large numbers. I tell you, each and every one of them has told me that India and Pakistan has wasted, have wasted 50 years in this conflict. Let us forget the past. Let us go ahead next 50 years. Let us concentrate on development, on progress. Why are we quarreling? We are of the same. And in Karachi, I was surprised. In Karachi club, I went to Karachi club. And almost 150 intellectuals were there. And each one of them had something to speak about India. Oh, my brother was a brigadier. My uncle was in the Navy. My father was there. Everybody had some connection. Why did they say, tell me this? Just to show how keen they are to improve their relationship with our country, how they are willing to come closer to each other. I don't know. I think we have spoiled. Huh? We have taken already 45 minutes. No, 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 for you only. Sorry. Anything? Yes. I've spoken so well about you. Yes, Mike, you, you have said all those people asked you and what you told them. Did you ask them why for the last nine years you have been sending terrorists to Kashmir? That has been the stand of the Congress Party itself, that they have been sending terrorists. Did you ask any of the intellectuals, any of the opposition, why they were sending there? Is it, a, is it an indication of their friendship and bond and people to people contact? I am talking about the people of Pakistan. I am not talking about the government of Pakistan, please. I am only narrating my interaction with the people of Pakistan. I am not talking on behalf of the government of Pakistan. Well, China, 1962, we had war. We cut off our diplomatic relationship with China. 
And when the diplomatic dialogue was started? It was started in 1979. By whom? Again, by Atul Bihari Bajpai, the first Indian dignitary to visit China after 1962 war officially was Mr. Bajpai, the then Foreign Minister of India. And from there, things started with Rajiv Gandhi's visit, with the President's visit, so many other things. And for the last many years, we have been trying to improve our relationship. We have been trying to build up our, what do you call, what do you call the confidence uh, building measures. I had visited China twice. I met President Jiang Zemin there. When President Jiang Zemin came to India, I had a very long discussion with him. I met so many of Chinese leaders in Beijing, where we have been talking how to build up this confidence building measure, how to establish this mutual trust. Let us forget other, uh, other uh, disputes, keep aside, concentrate on economic cooperation in the interest of both the countries with so much of pain, with so much effort, we have been trying to build up that relationship. And what happened? What happened to those efforts today with the simple action that you have done? I don't know whether, uh, anyway, uh, since the time is, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry, I had a lot of points to make. Yeah, yeah. I would, I, I would come to uh, CTPT because uh, I know, at least without this point I would not like to miss. How are you going to handle CTPT? We would like to know about it. Different people are speaking in different ways. Promote Mahajan says on the 13th, government have no intention of signing CTPT for now. George Fernandez on 18th of May said, the country would be willing to discuss CTBT <coughs> as a nuclear weapon state. I don't know what he's going to discuss, whether it is discussable or not. I know very little about CTBT. Just one thing on 18th on the same day said, we shall offer a meaningful discussion with key interlocutors of CTBT. Oh, Prajesh Mishra, of course, says... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Prajesh Mishra, I'm, uh, I, I'm reserving him for something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I don't want to take the name of one person many times. Of course, I can't have it. And in the... In the in, uh, uh, let me see. In para 19 of the... Uh, Prime Minister's statement. This is important, I think we should read. In Para 19, the Prime Minister has stated, subsequent to the test, government have already stated that India will now observe a voluntary moratorium. Of course, he has withdrawn it last night. I heard him on television. Why you had to say that? You claim to know everything what is going on in Pakistan. You knew that Pakistan was going to have a test. After having known all this, Prime Minister said that we are here observing voluntary. But after that test, yesterday suddenly he appeared before television. No, I have to review the moratorium. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Okay. It has also indicated willingness to move towards a de jure formalization of this declaration. The basic obligation of the CTBT are that's met. What does it mean? What does it mean? You are going to sign? And how are you going to sign? Have we really applied our mind? When CTBT was discussed here, the House was unanimous that we shall not sign CTBT. That was the consensus, not consensus, unanimity in the House. So our policy towards CTPT is also based on national consensus. And today, Prime Minister makes a statement without even taking us into confidence, without even discussing it in the Parliament, that we have met all the uh, obligations ready to sign the CTPT. 
Why did we oppose CTPT? We opposed CTPT because we wanted it to be really comprehensive. Now, if by the test, has it become comprehensive now? We took a position that it is not comprehensive. Now, after that test, it has become comprehensive. Secondly, we said that it should be non-discriminatory. That yes, you have your weapon and you're not allowing us to make the weapon. We don't agree to that. This is dis discrimination. Now India having got it, now you want to discriminate all the rest? Where is the difference between those countries and you? So far you have said it should be non-discriminatory. Now you are also going for discriminatory. And third, which is most important, is that the CTPT should be within the disarmament framework. <clears throat> that we should have a time-bound program of disarmament. You are talking about non-proliferation. You are not talking about disarmament. India insisted on disarmament. And when you have refused to sign the CTPT, because it did not contain a program for disarmament, and now because you have tested, I do not know how you have suddenly said that we are going to sign it. And if you are against armament, stockpile of weapons, your program is very clear. That's one thing in Unchin said. The question of weaponization is implicit in the test themselves. The demonstration by India is a capability of uh, 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 to weaponize and deploy weaponized programs in different systems of delivery. This is what just one thing said. Mr. Mistra, somebody wanted to hear Mr. Mistra. Yes. yes, the principal. Mr. Mistra said that trust establish proven capability for a weaponized program. That is what the principal secretary to prime minister says. Promote Mahajan, I have already quoted that tests are not meant for academic oh, purposes. You quoted, is changing every day. Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 they change, you know. You yeah. see. But some, on, on the spirit, they are quite consistent. Dr. Kalam, Dr. Kalam says, India's weaponization program is now complete. Dr. Chitambaram, the chairman of Atomic Energy Commission says, India will explode more nuclear devices to hone the weaponry it has deployed, it has developed. George Fernandez, I don't want to quote him, this is the last debate, who vehemently spoke against weaponization. You know? I, I, I have, I have the entire proceedings, but since there is a bell rang already. How is it that on one hand you are going to sign the CTPT, and on the other you are going ahead with the weaponization program? I really do not know. We owe. You owe an explanation to this country. What is your final stand on CTBT? We would like to know. No signing. Yeah. No signing? Okay. Right. That means what Prime Minister stated was wrong yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a verbal statement. It is a written statement laid on the table of the house. It's a written statement laid on the table of the house. I'm sorry, Prime Minister should no, no. consult you before he speaks. Government Why he has not reply. consulted you? Government will reply. Why unnecessary interruption? <laughs> Sir, on the policy of uh, duplicity, I have no time to speak. On the sanctions, on the sanctions, I can only say, I can only say on the sanctions, you know, Venkata Naidu, another Naidu, we are not bothered if sanctions are imposed. Prime Minister said sanctions cannot and will not hurt us. 
India will not be cowed down by any such threats and punitive steps. Pramod Mahajan says, how? He said, he does not care. Because in any case, India is 85% self-sufficient. He only forgot that this 85% self-sufficiency they could achieve in 50 days. That portion he forgot. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have the quotations from anybody. I demand, sir, to you that the government present before this House a full document on socio-economic costs and implications of the test. I have a lot of figures to tell the finance minister. Maybe the finance minister would not agree. The sanctions and the money that has been blocked and that will be cancelled by different countries. I have a long, long, long list of those aids that has been stopped flowing into India. I am reserving it for the budget debate. I would only would like that if not today by, by, by Prime Minister, at least the Finance Minister should present before this House a full document on socio-economic cost and implications of Fokan test on account of sanctions. Thank you, sir.